Welcome to Inside the NCA. I am Jack Ford. As so many of you know, questions have been percolating around the issues of name, image, and likeness for some time now. As a consequence, colleges and universities have been spending a great deal of time taking a look at options, different approaches on a path to dealing with this issue of name, image, and likeness. And we thought now would be an appropriate time to take a look at where we've been, where we are, to help you all out there understand this process. And we're delighted to have joining us Dan Dutcher, who is the Vice President for Division Three Governance with the NCAA, and a good friend. Dan, it's always good to see you. Good to see you, Jack. So let's start to frame our conversation here by asking you to d describe the process. What was going on uh, and, and how we've gotten to the point we're at now before we get into some of the specifics. You know, Jack, uh, when the Board of Governors in October um, endorsed uh, a report that charged the three divisions with moving the needle on the opportunity for student athletes to pursue uh, compensation related to their name, image, and likeness, um, it was a significant responsibility. Um, we established uh, a review process that really, like typical NCAA uh, 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 policy initiatives focused on our committee structure, but also we really tried to take advantage of input from our membership, and that's been a consistent theme all along. So after we appointed an oversight committee, um, the, the next major milestone was a comprehensive roundtable discussion that included about a thousand delegates at the NCAA convention last January in Anaheim. And we discussed some models of possible change with our delegates and, and, and received some feedback. Um, we had charged a couple committees in particular with considering how to amend our name, image, and likeness legislation. First and foremost, our student athlete committee, because when you look at this issue, it's really uh, an issue that, that directly deals with um, the, the health, the safety, the well being of our student athletes and their experience. Also, our interpretations legislation committee, because ultimately we're really talking about changes in legislative standards. Um, our SAC, our Student Athlete Advisory Committee, discussed this issue for the first time in January. Our interpretations committee uh, discussed this issue um, for the first time in February. But those discussions were really benefited from the feedback that we received from our delegates during those roundtable, um, that roundtable forum. And that feedback was really positive along the lines of uh, uh, amending our legislation to permit student athletes to take advantage more of their name, image, and likeness in a manner that's consistent with what students in general can do. And that's a, that's a typical theme in Division Three: Treat student athletes when you can like, like other students. So the recommendations that have come from those committees um, are to uh, basically potentially uh, affect some change and that, will, that review will continue through the committee structure um, during the course of, of the remainder of the year and culminate at the convention next January. Division three, largest of all the divisions. Uh, you have great diversity in, in all the yes. positive, most positive senses of that term throughout, uh, throughout your division. Understanding that, have, have you been pleased with, with the variety and the diversity of opinions and thoughts that you've received from the different groups that compose the division? You know, the, the themes have been pretty consistent, even though we are very large, very diverse. Um, the themes generally have been that we sh should do as much as we can to permit our student athletes to take advantage of their name, image, and likeness within the context of higher education. Um, emphasizing that um, it's important to try to have student athletes treated like other students, but recognizing that first and foremost in Division Three, we don't permit athletics aid, so we wanna really minimize to the greatest extent possible institutional involvement in creating, athletic, uh, in creating name, image, and likeness compensation because we don't want institutions involved in creating uh, athletically related income for our student athletes. Um, there are concerns consistently about how we're going to do this. Um, it's a complicated process. There are lots of issues that are going to arise. Who manages it? How do we ensure compliance? What's the marketplace going to look like? How do we educate our student athletes to allow them to succeed in this marketplace without being taken advantage of? So I would say that those kinds of themes have been pretty consistent um, 
the concerns have not been as uh, diverse as I thought they would be. There, there, there have been more consistent themes in terms of being cautious, being supportive, and ultimately trying to ensure this remains within the higher ed uh, spectrum. Were you surprised by the fact that the responses have not been as, as uh, diverse as you had anticipated? I, I'll tell you, a little bit surprised in the following context. Um, there is n the NCAA always focuses on trying to be sure that institutions to the greatest extent as possible compete on what we call a level playing field. Um, early on, our student athletes were, I think, the first group to formally say, hey, listen, um, level playing field is great in concept, but inherently different institutions have different advantages. They have advantages in terms of endowment. They have advantages in terms of their geographic location. There are lots of ways that institutions can be different. So they encouraged the division not to get too caught up on the ways in which name, image, and likeness potentially might be seen as an abuse that would give one institution an advantage over another. So in particular in the recruiting realm, they said, for example, we understand recruiting is important, um, but we think that name, image, and likeness can be uh, done in a way that doesn't become an inherent advantage for one school over another school um, and to sort of trust us to, to, to sort of work through that. So the, I would say I was, I was surprised a little bit in how uh, willing folks were to put um, those more limited and uh, uh, colloquial, if you were, concerns aside for the greater good of, of, our, of our student athletes. I was pleased, but I was a little surprised. Yeah. You, you talked a little bit before about the, the timing, what's been going on so far, and uh, let's, let's get us, if we can, to, to April, to the meetings that are scheduled in April. What would you anticipate will be coming out of those meetings? What should the expectations be of the Division Three members in terms of what might be coming out of those meetings? I think we'll have a, um, a package of concepts. They won't be draft legislation yet, um, but I do think we'll have uh, a legislative package that will uh, emphasize really uh, student athletes' ability to be compensated for their name, image, and likeness in two primary areas. The, the first area really relates to the academic area and the area of work product. So things like academic research, writing a book, doing a class project, tutoring. Um, but also when I talk about work product, I mean things like private lessons or establishing a personal business signing autographs, uh, establishing a, a, a YouTube uh, page, uh, having lots of followers on, on Twitter, those kinds of things. Um, historically in Division Three, you haven't been able to include your status of, of, as a student athlete. This proposal would allow you to, to do that. Um, institutional involvement will be limited though to what you institutions can do for students in general. The, the other area uh, that would be um, opened up potentially um, on, on the permissive front would be related to endorsements. So uh, being able to include your status as a student athlete um, uh, in, in participating in commercial endorsements, being a brand ambassador, um, modeling, those kinds of things. A couple caveats on that would be, number one, it's gotta be at the going rate. Um, number two, no active institutional involvement. Um, really um, also not including that as part of the recruiting process. So it's really something that would take part independent of the athletics department and independent of the recruiting process. Um, those are two areas that I, I would anticipate some kind of conceptual models moving forward for additional membership input. So right, last question for you is, again, you've been deeply involved in, in intercollegiate athletics for many, many years and, and very deeply involved specifically in the, the Division Three world. And you and I have talked about this in the past and, and I've often right. said, 
you know, I played, I was a division one athlete. My children were division one athletes. And it, 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 it were fabulous experiences for all of us, but I've always been so enamored of the division three <laughs> approach. Not that it's better than others. It's different, but I've always thought there's such great value to it. Right. That being said, and again, based upon your experience here, are, are you satisfied that this step towards modernization is still going to allow Division Three to remain Division Three to preserve the value of what makes it um, so the value that makes it so valuable uh, in the landscape of, of collegiate athletics? Yeah, I, I really am. I'm really confident that these proposed changes wouldn't undermine the essence of what that D3 student athlete experience is about. I really think this is emphasizing additional opportunities for student athletes like those that are available to other students. Um, there'll be a lot of educational value created by student athletes being able to take part in some of these activities. But at the same time, I have no doubt that the emphasis on academic success, uh, the emphasis on athletic success, the emphasis on other community service kinds of, uh, of activities, those expectations that exist um, within the Division three institutions aren't going to go away. I just think um, these initiatives would represent another way to ultimately add to that, that overall education for our student-athletes. Well, these, these are complex issues, certainly, that resolve thoughtful approaches. And I think what you're explaining to us, uh, Dan, should reassure all of us that, that these thoughtful approaches are being taken here. Uh, our thanks to Dan Dutch, the Vice President of Division Three Governance. Uh, Dan, it's always good to talk to you. And thanks for so much for sharing what's going on now. We'll talk again as we move forward. with all. My, my thanks to you, Jack, and be safe. Thank you. All right, you also. And I want to thank all of you for joining us on this edition of Inside the NCA. I'm Jack Ford. Stay safe. We'll look forward to talking with you again real soon.